Hello, sewing people of the internet. In this video, I'm going to unbox my new Sailrite Ultrafeed LSZ1 premium package with Worker B power pack uh, motor package. Uh, this video is sponsored by Nobody, and I want to use this opportunity to address maybe some misconceptions and some questions that have been brought up in previous videos I've made using Sailrite machines and other products. Uh, so full disclosure, in the past Sailrite has provided me with an Ultrafeed LS1 uh, five years ago, something like that, and a Worker B motor package. And they gave me a discount on a workhorse servo motor, uh, an industrial servo motor. But I have no relationship with Sailrite beyond the fact that they have provided um, items for me to review in videos in the past. I paid full price for this machine out of my own pocket. Uh, I just want to be clear that in the past people have uh, questioned whether or not the fact that Sailrite provided my machine colors my experience or, or my opinion of it. Uh, and I'm sure that to some extent that's always going to be the case. I, I like Sailrite. It's hard not to like somebody who gave me a machine. Uh, however, I have been so impressed with their products and having used them for a number of years now that I was willing to spend a lot of money to buy this one. So I'm going to unbox this machine, show you what comes in. I need to stop doing that. I'm going to unbox this machine, show you what you can expect if you buy one, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about some of the misconceptions and uh, issues that have been brought up that I'd like to address. So uh, I honestly did not even look to see what exactly comes with the premium package. I bought it for the Worker B motor, but it also includes a one inch swing away binder. I already have one of these, but um, it has been quite handy, so that's nice. Oh, that's cool, and a magnetic sewing guide. I've actually been thinking about buying one of those, so hooray. And the uh, Monster 2 wheel. This has the thread stand. So there's the uh, the regular worker bee wheel. I might I'm going to start off with this wheel on the machine. I have the Monster 2 on my LS1. Um, I have a feeling I'll probably be happier with the worker bee just for a little bit of extra speed. There's some stitch samples showing the machine's been uh, set up. Uh, it's a belt guard, posi pin. Some oil, a couple bobbins, the thread guide and a spool pin, and a couple needles, a little felt for spools that I'll never ever use. And a bag of tools. So, so far this is pretty consistent with uh, how I remember my LS1 coming. Um, I don't remember it having all this plastic. Not that that matters. Um, and you can see the Worker B motor is already mounted, which I would have expected. Shiny.
There's a flex light. Oh, I forgot that they send thread with this. Nice. So some probably V92 nylon thread. Yep. Uh, let's see, the pedal and power cord for the worker bee. Um, not sure what that is. We'll get to that in a second. Ah, the integrated thread, thread? The integrated thread stand for the case. That's that for that box. And I expect this box is the travel case or carrying case, whatever we're calling it. I've never actually seen one of these uh, before. I've always been interested in them. They look really, really nice. Like it actually looks nicer in person than I might have expected it to. Uh, very nice. Hmm. So it's got a little protector strap to uh, snap onto the case, I guess, to prevent stuff from snagging as you're sewing. It's nice. I don't know how much I will use the case, honestly. Um, although one of the advantages of this machine is that I can use it in my industrial style table here or bring it home if I have a project at home. So we'll see. The nice thing too is I could use this with either one of my sail rights. So. I like that. All right, that's everything that came in the boxes. I'm not gonna go into detail on the setup of the machine. I've got it uh, mostly set up now. Uh, I covered the setup of a machine in my review of the LS1 when I got that so for years ago and Sailrite has excellent videos on how to set up your machine so there's no point in me going over it. However, I wanted to point one thing out. When I got my LS1, uh, you know, again, five, six years ago, whenever it was, I noted that screwing in the spool pin was a little bit difficult because uh, some paint had gotten into the, the threads of the hole, I think. Uh, and I, I think I commented that it would be a good idea to chase those threads, but uh, they apparently have started doing that uh, in the meantime because uh, the threads were nice and clean and this screwed right in. So kudos to Sailrite if that's a change or maybe the one I got, you know, was just a, a fluke or something. But anyway, otherwise the setup was as expected, no big deal. I do want to point out one minor difference. The belt guard that came with this machine does not have a guide for the foot pedal cord. The one that I got originally from Sailrite does have a, I don't have the foot pedal cord plugged in, but it clips in right here. I believe uh, that I knew that there was gonna be a change or I, I don't know if the design was finalized on the one that I got. Um, I, I have slight preference for this. This works actually show you. So the foot pedal plugs in, the foot pedal plugs in here. And then the cord clips in there and it just keeps it from potentially getting caught by the the wheel i don't know if it really matters i do like this slightly better but i don't think it's any big deal that it doesn't have that just something to note if you are expecting one of these just know that it might be variations between what i have in my uh, worker b video and what actually gets shipped Okay, there was a delay of game, and it's totally my fault. Um, I wasn't getting a response from the pedal, and uh, I, because I'm so smart and I know so much, I started pulling fuses and I broke a fuse. Um, I hadn't plugged the motor to the control box, so it was completely my fault. The downside of thinking you know about something is that you don't stop and read the very good instructions that came with the machine. Uh, so I forgot to plug it in. My bad. Anyway, it's all hooked up and running now. Let's see how it sews.
Okay, so it's fine, right out of the box, just as I expected. So, I want to address a couple of issues that have been raised by commenters on several of my videos involving Sailrite products. Some of the comments that I'm referring to were a bit inflammatory. I just want to point out, I'm not trying to make a personal attack on anyone. We're all entitled to our own opinions. Uh, I'm going to try to answer the, the valid questions that I perceived as being asked to the best of my ability. If you're the person who asks some of these questions and you think I'm wrong, great. And, you know, we can talk about it in the comments or you can email me or we can just, you know, agree to disagree or whatever. But uh, I will say this. Uh, all the negative comments, I mean, I really honestly can't think of one single negative comment that I've read on any of my videos about a Sailrite product that made a specific allegation or claim about any negative aspect of the machines uh, or the company for that matter. So I'm going to address what what questions have been raised but if you have a specific claim that uh, there's a flaw with the machine that you can point out or anything at all like I'm listening but just making vague statements that you don't like a particular company or whatever that's not really helping anybody so if you're going to make criticisms about Sailrite or their machines, again, I have no affiliation with them, and if someone can demonstrate to me that there's something bad about this product, I'd really like to know. I just spent a lot of money on it. But let's be specific if we're going to do it. Okay, so one of the criticisms, uh, it was kind of a theme that came up in a group of comments, was that the Sailrite UltraFeed is not equal to an industrial machine like my Conso 206 here. Yeah, it's not. It's not supposed to be an industrial machine. Uh, Sailrite sells industrial machines, so clearly this is not an industrial machine. And part of this is just people throwing around the term industrial in the world and not having specific meaning for it. But this is a portable walking foot machine. It's intended for hobbyists and people to use at home to do products with heavier materials. And... I have heard of people using this in professional applications in the limited ways. I can see an application for this. I've alluded to that in the past that uh, if I needed to sew on a project that was too big to transport to me, then this would be a great option because I could put it in that awesome carrying case and take it to wherever I needed to sew with it. In fact, with the monster wheel, you can put a handle on it and sew without even plugging it into anything. So yes, this is a machine that could be used in a professional way, but no, it's not the same as that machine. If you sew for a living, day in, day out, like eight hours behind a machine, you shouldn't even be looking at this. That's not what this is for. Now, again, if you're starting a business and this is the best option for you, yeah, I bet you could do just fine with it. And I've put hours and hours on its brother, the LS1, uh, with really no issues. Uh, a couple of years ago, I broke a spring underneath it and replaced it for like $2. So there's no reason why I think that this machine couldn't last under day-to-day -day use. But again, that's not what it's for. And uh, to compare this to that machine would be an unfair comparison to both of them. Uh, on that note, uh, during one of these comment uh, free-for-alls, uh, the question was asked, and this comment never made it to the public comments, I'm not sure exactly why, but I think it should be addressed. The question was asked whether or not I sew professionally, um, and I, I think this is a good time to answer that. Uh, at this point, full-time, no, I'm not a professional uh, sewing machine operator or seamster. Uh, I do do work for hire from time to time, uh, and I sew at a professional level. I have been employed as a sewing machine operator and a marine canvas fabricator and uh, I spent about three years sewing professionally. Now I have a business that doesn't actually pertain to sewing but I do do sewing work on the side. So am I a professional seamster? Kind of, but is it my full-time job? Do I have a business where I use this machine day in day out? No, I do not. When I do sew professionally, nine times out of ten it's on that conso depending on what materials I'm working with. I can tell you that uh, just yesterday I was working on a project where I needed to do some box X stitching on some very thick assemblies 
and because I needed the precision and slow speed, I used my Sailrite Ultrafeed LS1 with a monster wheel and a worker bee because I can put a needle exactly where I want it very easily with that setup. So that was an occasion where I was using the Conso to sew something and switched to the Sailrite because it could do it better. I feel like I'm being a little bit defensive here, but the reason I am is the, the, the comments got a little bit inflammatory and yet never really clear. Just a lot of, well, this machine required, the, the ultra feed requires a lot of uh, hacks and fixes to work and all that. That's not been my experience now. I have two of them and I mean, I obviously have just sewn on this for a few minutes, but it works exactly as I would expect it to. Uh, I don't have any idea what that commenter was talking about, but is it an industrial machine? No. Can it function as one? Maybe to some limited extent, and it might be even better in some circumstances, depending on what you're doing. Uh, another commenter, and again, I'm not calling you out, man. Like, you had some very good thoughts. We've, we've talked about it in the comments section, um, but uh, one person was convinced that a carbon pile foot pedal provided the same kind of control that the worker bee setup does. And I didn't know what a carbon pile foot pedal was until I was uh, educated on it by the commenter. Uh, my Thompson machines that I no longer have both used carbon pile foot pedals. You don't have to take my word for it, but I can tell you that there is no comparison between a standard household motor using a carbon pile pedal and the worker bee, like it's not even the same race. The worker bee is just a whole different level of controllability. The reason why I finally broke down, I've been wanting an LSZ one really since I, I wanted them to send me an LSZ one when they sent me the LS one. Uh, I've long said that like, I'm a, I'm a two machine minimum guy. I think a walking foot machine and a domestic standard machine are kind of like the two machines everybody should have and this one comes really close to being the one machine that everyone should have i still don't think it's ideal for like really ultra light materials but that's probably another video but i've wanted one of these for a long time and i've just never gotten around to buying one until i got the worker bee package and put it on my other machine and then I was like, that's it, I'm buying an LSZ1 with the Worker Bee. So suffice to say, I was sufficiently impressed by the Worker Bee package and I wasn't impressed by it for nothing. I mean, at, at this time I have an industrial machine powered by a servo motor. I have a Sailrite workhorse servo motor that's eventually gonna go on another industrial machine. I have all manner of domestic sewing machines. I own 30 sewing machines and through my employment, I've used probably another dozen different industrial machines. There's no comparison between any of those machines and the worker bee. If you think there is and you haven't used it, you clearly don't know what you're talking about. You haven't tried it. So I guess I would just say that if you have an opinion on the worker bee and you've never actually put your foot on the pedal and made it go, you should probably try it first before you opine on it. It's it really is remarkable. I don't care if you I don't get any kickback from Sailrite if you buy them. I don't have an affiliation with them. I don't have affiliate links. It matters not to me at all. I've got my two. That's probably the only two I'll ever own. You know, I mean, provided they last for the rest of my life, which I hope they will. So you can do whatever you want, but maybe try it before you tell the world what you think about it. Just, you know, that's how I roll. I'm just gonna freestyle my opinion a little bit on the ultra feed machines. I don't know how much this will relate to a lot of you, but uh, there are hobbyist mills and lathes in the world that someone who is interested in doing machining can learn to do machining on and provided they're using materials that are within the limitations of those machines, they can do professional work on them. If you go into a professional machine shop, you're very unlikely to find those machines. That doesn't mean that those machines are junk or are unworthy. It's that those machines don't fit into the context of an industrial machine shop. Could they withstand the rigors of an industrial machine shop? I mean, maybe, depends on the machine, depends on how they're used, what their limitations are. 
I think that it's best to think of the ultra feeds as like those hobby level mills and lathes and things like that. It provides very similar function, some might argue sometimes better function, than a full-on industrial machine. And if you are a hobbyist or a, you know, a cottage maker who maybe doesn't work in a shop with a bunch of machines running 24 hours a day, but you know, you'd like to make stuff or maybe make some money from making stuff, then this definitely can be used for that. Uh, if you're opening a factory and you're gonna have dozens of machines running, then no, that's not what this is. So um, I, I think you really have to put into context what this machine is intended to be when you consider the quality of the machine. One supreme advantage of the LSZ one is that it is a walking foot machine with zigzag. Those exist in industrial sewing machines, but they're pretty hard to find, and in my experience, they've been expensive when I've found them. There are industrial zigzag machines all over the place. I don't know, maybe not all of them, they exist, and they're not that hard to find, but walking foot zigzag is, is very unusual to find. And that's really the reason why I wanted this machine. There are occasions when I want to put a bar tack on a thick piece of webbing that's been folded over at least once, maybe twice, on top of, you know, a couple layers of Cordura with some foam in the middle, you know, on a backpack strap or something. And that's what I'm going to be expecting this to do. Before I wrap this up, um, it can't all be good stuff all the time. So there has to be something I don't like about the Sailrite Ultra Feed, right? Well, uh, the first thing I can think of is I do wish it had a little bit more foot height. I understand there's some ways you can tweak that a little bit. Um, and I don't know, I've never actually measured, like, it looks about the same as on my Conso 206. Um, I think I want more foot clearance on all of my machines, frankly. But there are definitely times when I'm trying to force something under there that it's more than capable of sewing. It's just hard to get it under the foot sometimes. You know, again, I, I don't know that I'm satisfied with the foot height of any machine, but that, that's a legitimate criticism. I wish it had more foot height. One other criticism I have about the Ultrafeed machines is the placement of the foot lift lever. I don't know why it's on top, um, because I have walking foot machines, like the Conso, that but every other machine I have, walking foot or not, it's on the back, and this is the only style of machine I've ever seen where it's on the top. I'm sure there's a reason why it's there. I've never asked anybody, so, but, and the fact that it's on the top isn't a problem if you only use this machine. It's a problem, it's not really a problem, but when you go back and forth to other machines, you find yourself reaching on top of other machines for the, and it's not there, and then you come to this one, you reach in the back. I mean, it's a minor, minor nuisance, but like if, if they do a clean sheet design or redesign of this ever, I would love it if that were in the back where it normally is on other machines. Very minor. Probably my biggest uh, issue with the Ultra Feed, and this is something that I, I think is worth getting into a little bit, is that there's no reasonable way for most people to make a knee lift for this machine. So right now I have this machine sitting in the Sailrite industrial style table for an ultra feed, which I also bought with my own money. I got this used actually. I know that I've seen people take you know, the Sailrite and put it in this table and like it's getting closer and closer to being an industrial machine. But until you can put an e-lift on it, it's never gonna be the same. The, the, using a knee lift, especially a knee lift with a needle positioner on a servo motor, if you're trying to be efficient, you can't beat that. The precision of the worker bee is awesome, but being able to just let off your foot and it go needle down every single time. And in fact, it goes needle down and then just a little bit past bottom dead center so that it won't skip a stitch when you're making a turn. So when you're doing something like a box X, you can just sew to the corner, stop, turn, sew to the corner, stop, turn. It's a very quick, very easy 
process to do, and nothing is going to make the ultra feed do that without having a knee lift and, frankly, without a needle positioner. Again, if you are doing production sewing, then probably you shouldn't have bought this machine to begin with. So um, I, I was careful about how I said you can't put a knee lift on it. There are people who have made knee lifts for these machines. Uh, one guy did it with like a bicycle brake cable and some other stuff. It is possible. It's not feasible for most people. There's not an off the shelf option that you can just plug and play to make it work. Uh, if that ever becomes available, I'll be the first to try it. Uh, and I mean something simple that can be attached to the table without uh, a great deal of engineering involved. In terms of using this machine as an industrial machine, not having an e-lift is a significant weakness. So you might be wondering, why did I buy this machine? One reason is honestly to uh, make it clear to people who have questioned some of my uh, praise of these machines that I'm putting my money where my mouth is. Uh, it's easy to praise a machine that was given to me. This one cost me a lot of money. So far, I love it. I'm actually kind of giddy about it. I'm really, really happy. Uh, this is about as happy as this face gets. But I, I really am truly excited about this machine and I'm really, really pleased with it so far. And if it catastrophically breaks tomorrow, you will hear about it because I'm going to be pretty upset. I don't expect that to happen. Will I be using this machine instead of my Conso 206? Probably not most of the time. Like when I get serious about making a project, I go to the Conso. It's just, that's my go-to machine. But I do enjoy using the UltraFeed machines. Uh, sometimes it's just because I want to wheel this into the other room of my shop or if I want to take this home and work on a project at home so you can see my cat climbing all over me while I'm trying to sew. Uh, and having the capability of this machine will definitely make that even better. I think I've mentioned this in other videos, but the base dimensions of the Sailrite Ultrafeed machines is the same as full-size vintage Singer machines like my Singer 201s or my Singer 237. So I can put any of those machines in this table and I can put this machine in any vintage Singer table. I have a couple at home. So if I want to bring this home, I can just pop it out of this table, put it in a table at home. It's not the same as this industrial style table, but it still functions pretty well. And also the super cool case uh, gives me another option for using it at home. So I imagine this machine will probably go back and forth between here at my shop and at home for projects there. Probably the main reason I got it is I'm crazy apparently and just have this thing about sewing machines. And like I said, I think I'm at 30 or more now. And this is just one that I really wanted for my collection. And uh, I look forward to enjoying using it. That is my unboxing and initial impressions of my brand new paid for by me Sailrite Ultrafeed LS Z1 premium package featuring the Worker B power pack. Make sure you plug in all the plugs before you try to use it so you don't end up breaking a fuse like me. Thank goodness I had another fuse in the other Worker B. I hope you found this helpful or interesting. If you have questions or comments, please post them in the comments section. If you have criticisms about me or the machine, you know, maybe be a little bit more specific um, so we can actually have a, a fruitful discussion that people can learn from. And uh, if you like this video, please click the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd love it if you would subscribe to my channel. I don't say it often enough. I really, truly appreciate all of you who have been watching and commenting and liking. Uh, I don't make anything even remotely close to a full-time income from YouTube and almost certainly never will. But the little bit of money I make does make it easier for me to buy toys like this and be able to share what I've experienced with you. So thank you very much. All right. See you next time. Holy crap. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs>